This lesson is going to address the subject of blocks, B-L-O-C-K-S. So I'm going to go to File, I've already saved previously. And this file has a block in it that I created. What does this block look like? Well, if we go ahead and say insert the block, we'll make it one to one. And that's what the block looks like, okay? All it is is a cluster of lines and circles. It has a reference point right in the center there. So what I want to do, I want to replicate this block. I want to use our modify tool. First, I'm going to take this block. Notice the block treated as an entity. I can slide it around by clicking on one, one point on the block and move it. So I'm going to put it right there. So first I want to create a circle, center point, radius. We'll put center point right there, and radius right there. Okay, now I want to take this block, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select it, delete it just like you would any single entity. I'm going to insert the block again. This time I'm going to scale it. So when I insert the block, it's up for rotation. We have no rotation. We could rotate. I'm going to scale it by a factor. It's going to be one third. So you notice when I go to place it, it's one third the size that it was before. There's some little quirky things going on here. We can flip the block horizontally. We can flip the block vertically as we place it. We can also break this chain which links the X and the Y scales. Once we break the chain, there's something weird that happens here though. I think it's a program fault. Let's make the Y dimension half scale. Notice now that the block is oblong shaped because the X scale is reduced to one third and the Y scale is only reduced to one half. So the block is distorted. If I go up here and I click this back, then it grays that out. So you would think that now it's gone back to one third on both of them, but it doesn't. So I think there's a program bug here. And that's grayed out. It really shouldn't be having any impact. So once you change it, you have to go ahead and put it back right now with this version of software. And I'll bring it down to be one third, like it's supposed to be. So let's just place it right here. And then I want to replicate various copies of this block. So the easiest way I know to do that is go up here and use our modify tools. And I'm going to select the block as an entity. I'm going to use this tool here. Remember the um, two circles tool. So I'm going to center of the primary rotation. That's going to be the center of this circle. And then the center of the secondary rotation. Notice up here the secondary rotation. Remember we can set the angle, the secondary angle, and how many copies. I made the secondary angle zero so it does not rotate as it's being drawn around here. So that we now have five copies plus the original. So we now have six copies of that block, block number one. If you right click on a block name, it tells you all the possibilities, things you can do with this block. Most of them, they're listed up here too, so we can, we can make the block not viewable. Now it's not viewable on the drawing, or make it viewable again. And we can edit the block right here with this pencil. So let's edit this block. And notice now it gives us a full scale picture of the block. And I can select an entity on it here. And I can delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to the drawing page. So this put us on a special page to edit the block. The block one is being edited on this special page. So to go back to the drawing page, I got to exit this block edit mode, go back, return to the main drawing. If you notice now, all these blocks have that same circle missing. The, the change in the block one itself changes all instances, all occurrences of that block in the drawing. Let's edit the block again. Left click it, select the edit tool. And we can go ahead and delete this one. Let's, let's delete this line here. And once 
once we're finished editing this block, we have to go back to the click in the X here, returns back to the main drawing. If you don't, then these changes aren't saved. So you have to return to main drawing, that automatically saves these changes. I know it's got circle missing here, we've got the line missing there, and that's replicated on all the issues of that block. It's very important to understand that this block number one consists of this item right here. That's only saved in this blocks.dxf file. It's not saved anywhere else. It's not saved in the INI. It's not saved in any other file. It does a temporary file when you edit it, but when you're finished, it's part of the file you currently have open. So if you ever delete this file, you've lost that block forever. Creating a block is very straightforward. Here I have a drawing file which has the all these entities on it, which you could have used to create block number one. So all I have to do is select the entities I want to use for my block. Once I've selected the entities, come over here and click on this CAD tool, create block from selection. So when I click on that, it's going to ask for a reference point for the block. So I'm going to use the center of this block as a reference point right here. To make sure it's the center. I'm going to snap to the center of the circle. So that's my reference point for the block, and now it needs a block name, so we'll just let it call it block number one. So now we've created block number one. What you may not observe here is that when we created block number one, it removed all these drawing entities and replaced them with block number one. So this is now block number one. It's not the separate entities we had when we created the block. So I'm going to remove block number one. We'll go select it delete it from the drawing. Now we're back to our blank drawing again. We got block one over here. Let's say we want to edit it. So we can go ahead and edit the block. We've done this earlier. I can remove one item or I can distort it. Let's just distort it, slide it over here. Got to click when I'm finished. Now we have to, like we said earlier, we have to hit this X up here to return to the main drawing that saves the block. Now if we go ahead and insert the block, and we'll use a scale of 1, notice there it is with the one circle missing. So we have, in fact, moved that circle over. So that's how you create a block. That's how you edit a block. There's not much else you can do with a block. You can create it, edit it. Selecting block references, if you have a lot of blocks in a drawing, what this is going to do is going to select the blocks that are, that are replicates of the block. In other words, every instance that it's used in will be highlighted on the drawing and select as you can easily find them. Because you might want to see what effect changing the block would have on the rest of the drawing. This helps you determine their locations. And we can also deselect the block references so they're no longer selected on your drawing. You can also create a block, an empty block, and then later on add entities to it. So if we click on a plus up here, we can enter a new block. Let's say we'll give it a name because there's something in particular we want to put in that block. It might be a uh, crankshaft. So we have that crankshaft block labeled. Later on, we can select it and we go up here and edit it. And we can insert whatever we want to into the crankshaft block when we're finished and we save the crankshaft block. So that just about covers the block concepts. Blocks are very useful. If it's something you're going to use a lot, make a block for it instead of doing it over and over. And this concludes the blocks lesson.